so what I have prepared today, um, basically on, on, on my machine here is a little demonstration um, of Symfony. We will also go through the basic concepts, the, the setup that is required. Um, if for my demonstration, I have been, um, I'm running an, an uh, Atlas in Jira server, version 8.6. Um, I'm running the latest version of Symfony, and I uh, also I'm also connected in the background um, uh, to my to my cloud uh, as, as uh, Azure DevOps um, server. So we have Jira here, Azure here, uh, with Symfony here. Um, just to give you a little an insight of, of the rest of the setup, I'll just jump into the um, the installation page itself. So we see all the components that I applied to the to the to the platform. Um, we have the Azure adapter, the Jira adapter, um, the basic process template. That's kind of the best of breed, uh, the best of uh, Best of, of, of all the implementations uh, that we've done in the past 10 years. So this is a, this is a best practice uh, kind of um, collection here. And uh, I also installed the, um, the Jira uh, and Azure integration um, in Symfony. That's a ready build, uh, build process um, that we provide along with the platform. Um, so each of the components, um, they do have specific configurations that we call configuration sets. Um, if we if we take a look into the adapters, this is mostly uh, connection related information. So if we just jump to the Azure adapter, I've created a config set called Cloud. Um, in Symfony, you can have as many connections uh, to to um, to uh, to the uh, two systems as you want. So in case I would run um, various kinds of or, uh, various kinds of, of repositories uh, for Azure, I could just um, hook it uh, with different configuration sets. So if I run also an on-premise version, I can also um, just create another config set here. And then um, it's mainly usually um, connection-related uh, parameters. So this is just my um, uh, my instance here, my organization here, um, and then in Symfony, I have, I always had do have a way, of course, to verify if the connection works. By the way, um, this kind of of um, of connection tests is is done automatically by Symfony on a regular basis, um, so that if some problems occur in a connection to a tool. You can you can really um, very early identify that and, and and make it part of your your uh, monitoring notification strategy as, as well. Um, same kind of thing for Jira. It's just a local instance that I'm running here. These are the connection uh, parameters, just like where the application is reachable and and basically the credentials. Um, and um, there's nothing much uh, to configure about the process template itself, um, but for the process um, implementation that we have here, there's a couple of um, configuration parameters available. Those are mainly usually for different projects. So yeah, I have created one configuration for a demonstration project. So which in fact then brings together um, which of the uh, Azure connections I want to use, which of the uh, Jira connections I want to use. Um, then uh, we do have uh, the possibility here to, to drop a Jira query string. So this is just identifying which of the, which of the um, issues from Jira are part of the synchronization. Um, there is also alternative implementations where you could just select from a list of predefined queries in, in Jira. There is there's, there's, um, hundreds of advantages and disadvantages for, for each, uh, for each uh, uh, option. Uh, we have the type of item that we will create um, in Azure, and we also do have what we call a mapping scenario. That is a connection to Simply's um, mapping module. Uh, that is basically responsible for uh, the data transformation itself. If we just have a short look into that one, 
Um, you can see these mapping scenarios are reusable. Um, they're also, uh, they also um, do have a mechanism of inherit inheritance. So especially if you're running a large uh, amount of projects uh, with a platform, that's pretty, that's pretty nice because you can have a, a basic uh, mapping scenario that clarifies all the standard and default fields. Uh, whereas you can have a specific uh, project configuration that just sorts out um, uh, the, the one or two extra fields that uh, that uh, each project wants, wants to synchronize. Um, the mapping scenario, I have taken a quite simplistic example here um, with just the title and the description, and then those can be just administrated. So I get a list of, of the attributes on each side, and then I can I can just um, select whatever I want to want to synchronize here. So um, that's the mapping side of the story. I'll just go back and use the default mapping here. Um, the last remaining aspect um, in the Symfony platform is then the scheduler. It's pretty much like the mapping module organized in, in groups. So with a growing amount of, of synchronization, you're going to have different kind of, of groups available here that helps organize the system a little bit um, better. So uh, we have one schedule defined uh, for the demonstration project. The scheduling is pretty much done like uh, like what you might know from uh, from Cron. Um, and there's a little editor here that helps us understand um, the different parameters. So we can set up pretty much every combination on what what day in the week and and when exactly um, the processes uh, are are launched. Um, uh, we do also have a, another interface uh, available in Symfony uh, where the synchronization processes can be triggered from outside. That's an alternative way of, of implementing um, the system. Uh, it's usually done like if you, for example, if you're in a position to uh, send um, to send an event uh, message from, let's say, a webhook in Jira. That's alternative implementation to the scheduler. So once this is uh, this is all set up, um, I can basically just run it. So uh, from here, it's for testing purposes, so it just goes through um, just one single object in Jira that has been synchronized. Now let's see for for the details here. I'll just check into the Argo project. Um, so it takes a little bit. On my machine to wake up. Um, takes a little bit more um, while we're waiting for for, uh, for Jira. What we can see, this one single item has already been synchronized. So I just create another one um, on the Jira side, and then we run the process again, expecting that it's going to be exposed to the um, to the Azure balls um, on the other side. So it takes a little bit more time. And more time and more time and more time. So let me just have a look here. Now we're there. So here's our measurement problem that has been transported. And I'll just create another one and say, oh, we also do have um, more than obvious performance issues. <laughs> um, and then we say Jira is quite slow today. I create the item. It's becoming part of the uh, of the issues list. I just update that for a second. Hope it doesn't take again too long. Um, so it's uh, created. It says and it's loading data. It says and la while we're waiting, we just go and get the scheduling on the Symphony side. Let's uh, is it finished yet? Let's just be patient. Uh, yeah, okay, it's there. So let's go schedule some, and I'm gonna run the, uh, the schedule again. So. Firing and then um, 
we should see like the process pretty fast here, of course, a uh, small amount of data. Um, what we can also see here is the, is, is, uh, is, uh, the transaction type of, of processing that Symfony does. So on the first phase of the process execution, of the execution of the synchronization, what we do is what we call a, a scoping that is identifying all objects to be transferred. That's pretty much in our example here based on, on the query. Um, and then Symfony just walks through each of the objects and synchronizes them. That's then uh, what we call the execution phase. So both um, both objects synchronized. Um, let's check on the um, on the work items here. If I just jump into into the Azure side and update it quickly. We see the performance issue is propagated. Um, in the background, Symfony uses um, uses a module that we call Persistence that is responsible for keeping track of um, the surrogate object creation. So at any point in time, we do know um, uh, from 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 looking from Jira side or Azure side, we do know which objects have been created and how the relationship is. Um, we do also store detailed checksum based information for each app, for each attribute, the attachments, for the comments, um, so that the process can be as effective as possible in just uh, synchronizing um, the, the really relevant changes. So that's um, that's pretty much uh, the basic setup that we do have in. Um, that we do have in Symfony. Maybe a last word. Uh, there's also kind of a log mechanism available. This is what we call the reporting module. Um, so and that is taking track of of all the ex all the process executions that uh, that were taking place. Like we see, the last ones were all successful. Here was a problem uh, right before the show. Uh, we are bumped into some some. Just because my personal token in Azure was expired, so um, that's how Symfony is then also collect, uh, collecting the problems, uh, so that you have a clear record um, of what's going on, and you can resolve from, from those issues.